Okay, and we are. Hi, uh, good evening to everyone in Malaysia, and uh, actually it's the afternoon for Vanaja. She's in uh, uh, Yan Choping, Sweden. Did I say that right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome her to our home studio and uh, she is in a home right now. It's a Sunday morning and we just launched the uh, World Space Week this morning in uh, the Planetarium Negara called Lumpo. It was a beautiful launch. I think everybody, you know, still practicing the social distancing uh, to a very, uh, you know, minimal type of uh, opening ceremony. Uh, but today we are about to talk uh, to Vanaja and she is the opening speaker live from Sweden. And uh, let's just, uh, you know, start off uh, with uh, maybe uh, you know, can you share, uh, Vanaja, a bit about your background and your current role uh, in Sweden? Hello, Pais. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's really nice to be here. I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor to be here on Malaysia's uh, on the World Space Week, and uh, I should say good evening, Malaysia. It's early twelve o'clock in the afternoon here in Sweden. Um, <clears throat> so, hello, Malaysia. <laughs> Malaysia is all waving back at you, BJ. <laughs> Malaysia is waving back at me. That's really nice. It's really a great opportunity to speak to everyone. Uh, I, I just uh, spoke to a couple of a uh, few students from the Taylor's Astronomical Society the other day, and they yeah. had a, a webinar as well. So okay. they were talking about. They had me as a speaker for the Tales from Outer Space. Um, oh session <laughs> so it was very nice and i you know you know the story the story yeah. that we both have shared which is yeah. very unique to the two of us so yeah. i told them the story showed them some pictures and videos and you know how it goes we were supposed to be talk for about half an hour and 45 minutes i ended up talking to them for two hours oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so, and i realized i haven't spoke about this in a very long time and as soon as I start, it just comes back to me like it happened yesterday. And it was such a so amazing to think back to everything that we have done and speak about it again. So I'm very happy to be here. Yes. Uh, for those viewers that uh, don't know it, uh, back in 2006, uh, Vanaja and myself, I call her VJ now quite daily. Uh, we were competing, you know, against each other, you know. We probably were not really good friends then because, you know, uh, we were in competition and, you know, it was uh, for only one seat. Uh, that was for the Angkasawan program or the astronaut program. And they only had one seat for the four of us with the top four finalists out of over 11,000 applicants. And we went to Moscow and, you know, so we developed a bond and now we share a great friendship and, uh, you know, a, a mission together to promote science to, you know, um, all Malaysians. Anyway, uh, can, can you explain a bit more to them about, you know, uh, your background? You know, it, it's been like uh, 2006, like I say, uh, how many years now? Uh, 14 years since the Angkasa oh. program, you know. Everybody's curious, what happened to VJ? Where, where is she? What is she doing? And, you know, I found you in uh, Yan Choping and, you know, yes. you can share a bit of that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, no problem at all. Um, uh, the program was in 2006, as you know, Ken, and then in 2007, um, I... Uh, had the opportunity to study my master's uh, in Sweden because um, I have already applied for a master's program in 2006 while we were still in the astronaut program. Right. So, uh, and I got accepted to the master's program at this amazing, wonderful university called Chalmers, Chalmers University of Technology, which is in Gothenburg, Sweden. And I got accepted at a master's uh, a seat in the master's program in 2006, but I had to write to them and tell them that, you know what, I'm in the middle of <laughs> the, <laughs> the Malaysian astronaut program right now, and I'm in the final four, and a lot of things are going on at the same time. Okay. Yeah, if you remember, Fires, that was the time that we were, we came back from Russia with our results, and they were going to announce the final two. So it was like very critical moment at that yeah, time. Yeah. So, and then I told them that could I, if this doesn't work out, could I please uh, submit my application again in 2007? And could you please keep my application in view? And they, you know, as kind as they were, they agreed. 
So after 2006, when 2007 came, I submitted my application again, and then they accepted me again for the <laughs> master's program. So <clears throat> that was the background of that. And then after they have accepted me, then I started thinking about what am I going to do for the money? <laughs> because, you know. Good, good one. <laughs> Something good to think about. Right? How, how am I going to do it, right? <laughs> Something to think about. I just wanted to, you know, go and do my master's. And I was very happy to get to get uh, accepted into the program. And then I thought about the, the you know, the big thing, <laughs> the money. <laughs> And uh, that is when Miasat Satellite Systems came into my life, uh, like a saver, a savior that it was, a lifesaver for sure, an angel, uh, with the scholarship for my studies. So, Congratulations. Um, yes, uh, one thing that everyone should know is education, education is free in Sweden. Education has always been free in Sweden, so it is still free today, university education included. Um, wow. But uh, the year that I joined Chalmers uh, for my master's program was the final year that it was free for anyone outside of EU. Oh, okay. Wow. So I was very, very lucky that I didn't have to pay for my education because it was still free when I started my master's program. So the people of Sweden, the taxpayers of Sweden paid for my education, actually. Wow. So, <laughs> but... Living in Sweden is extremely expensive. It's one of the highest, um, um, it's one of the most expensive countries in the world. And also it's got a very high standard of living and very high tax rate as well. So in order for me to survive here, I needed at least a minimum of 1,000 US dollars a month as a student for rent. Oh, yeah, then, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> so I had to. I had to go to Miasat and ask them for a scholarship <laughs> so that I can actually support myself. It's not for the education, but it's for me to support myself for two years while I do my masters. So that is when I came into the contract agreement with Miasat, so okay. that uh, I will come back and work for them for three years with for that scholarship that they gave me. So I did two years at Chalmers, and then um, at the end of the second year, last six months of my master's program, I was based in Miasad uh, wow. as an employee, was mm -hmm. working there for six months on my master thesis with my thesis partner, uh, who mm -hmm. happens to be my classmate at that time, and her name is Shaima, and she is from Morocco. Okay, and I'm sure I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shaima. And we did our master thesis a master project together at uh, Miasat on uh, trying to improve the efficiency of the customer service department. I believe you will be speaking to the uh, one of the uh, customer service uh, executives at Miasat regard for this yeah. week as well. Yeah. And yes, we have people lined up with Miasat. Sorry, carry on then. Okay, it was it was a great honor to be there and to work for them and be involved in the operations as much as I have. And after I finished my master's, then I came back to Malaysia, worked for Miasat for a year. And then I was, my heart was back in Sweden, back at Chalmers, because, uh, you know, I absolutely love Gothenburg. Gothenburg is my home now. And uh, I loved Chalmers. And then I fell in love with the, with the Swedish guy. And, you know, everything was happening for me in Sweden. <laughs> so I, was, I started applying for a PhD uh, position at Chalmers for that one year that I was back in Malaysia because I've always wanted to do my PhD, PhD as well. So I got a position, uh, I got accepted for a position, PhD position in 2011, and then I moved back to Sweden to do my PhD. And oh. then after finishing PhD in 2016, I got a postdoc position in Dublin at Trinity College Dublin in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So I moved there for that well, I'm, reason. I've never been there. <laughs> Oh, Dublin is an awesome city. Such a fantastic, beautiful. Yeah, I remember you invited me, and uh, I just couldn't, uh, you know, find the time. I should have, you know, sometimes it it passes you by. Anyway, I carry on yeah. with that. Everywhere I go, I've been inviting you, guys. <laughs> I know. I will. I will be there soon. Or, you know, as soon as this pandemic is over. Anyway. Yeah, you fly all over the world, but you can't stop in Sweden and visit me. I've been, I've been inviting you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one year and three months at Dublin, uh, mm -hmm. fin finished up my postdoc research there, and then I got a job in Yan Choping University, 
uh, at the School of Engineering as an assistant professor. So I took this job and moved to Sweden again in yeah. December 2017. So I've been here ever since. Well, I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, Malaysians are envious, you know, uh, of your, uh, your your studies in uh, Sweden, you know. Uh, even I, I feel jealous and say, oh, I really want to be there, you know. So can you maybe explain more about the opportunities, you know, that's uh, available for Malaysians to further their education in Sweden? Absolutely, Faiz. There is not enough Malaysians here. The first, <laughs> <laughs> the first two years that I was at uh, Chalmers in Gothenburg, I, I prided myself. I was very proud and went around telling everyone, I'm the only Malaysian in Gothenburg. <laughs> you can't find anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> Malaysians don't come as far as Sweden. This is like um, a bit too far, can? Because no, uh, lagi, right? <laughs> and then you see in October now. This I haven't seen the sun in like one week. <laughs> <laughs> in the winter the days get very short and it's sun it's it's uh, windy cloudy and rainy it rains sideways and people get a little bit down during the winter and everything sure. but, but I, sorry i just to say i've been to uh, sweden a lot of times during the summer <laughs> but the sun doesn't even uh, go away i'm like sleeping the sun's still there i woke up the sun is still there throughout the <laughs> night I, I, i'm really i was like you know <laughs> that's tough right so you do exactly you do that <laughs> Yes, exactly. So it's the same thing where in the spring, when spring comes, like in March and April, uh, June, April, May, June, July, August, September, the whole time, the sun, you know, it just get the days get longer and longer and longer. You can't, three o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, the sun is already up. You know, you get like two or three hours of darkness. <laughs> in, in, when, even if you get some darkness, because the you it never gets dark you can always see the a little bit of light on the horizon you know it's very beautiful so <clears throat> we it's not malaysia it's not on the equator so it's okay. a little bit different and of course you you tak boleh nak makan nasi lemak roti canai chao koi that's not right <laughs> that is yeah that's i mean a lot of other countries are like in Australia. You have a lot of Malaysian food. You can still go to US and eat Malaysian food. In UK, there's a lot of Malaysian food. But in so, Sweden, <clears throat> in Sweden, so absolutely none. <laughs> so having, having said that, you know, so what, what would be the advantages, you know, uh, for someone if they decide that they, they want to study in Sweden? So how are you going to convince them now, you know? There's, there's not enough sun at the time, uh, you know, not enough daylight, and it's cold, yeah. and the food's not good. So, yeah, maybe the advantages and you know yes of course absolutely to our viewers <laughs> okay absolutely <laughs> sorry no i don't do not want to paint a rosy picture for people so i might i might as well just tell them what is not so good here so that they understand that everything is not great because okay. if you if you ask me to describe sweden I am going to make it seem like the best place in the world because I love it so much. You know, I love it that it's dark outside. I'm a, I'm a night person. So, and I love it that it's cold. In Malaysia, it's too hot for me. I'm miserable in Malaysia because it's too hot for me. So I it love the cold. Right now. Okay, anyway. Exactly. And here, I'm never exposed to air conditioning. There is no air conditioning at all in this country. It's against the law even to have yeah. air con anywhere. Wow, so, that's it, interesting fact. <laughs> no, because it's not, it's not good for the environment, can We are very, oh, yeah. um, very, very particular about sustainable development oh. and um, contributing to the environment in a sustainable way. So we are very eco-friendly. Uh, we have everything, uh, all the products in the supermarket are ecological and uh, very um, environmentally conscious uh, society and everything that we do, even at the school, at the university, the research that we do, the teaching mm -hmm. that I do, has a lot to do with sustainable development. Wow, that, that, that's amazing. Uh, so maybe we'd like to share some uh, visuals. Uh, first of all, you are in uh, this uh, very interesting uh, university called uh, Yan Choping, and you know, we'll put that, uh, do you want to sh uh, show the video now about uh, you know, what life is there? So yes, please. Please. For a break for them to see some visuals, what, what do you think? Yes. Let's okay. roll the video. <laughs> All right, let's. I hope everybody will enjoy this.
Right. <laughs> Young Chopin uh, University in uh, Sweden. Wow, amazing. You know, I was looking at that video and I thought, oh, I can really feel, you know, uh, tranquility being calm. Like, you know, I can really study and uh, put some uh, brilliant papers, you know, even doing my PhD there. You know, it's very inspiring. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's a beautiful city, as you can see. Um, the, the city is located uh, right at the second biggest lake in Sweden. So yeah. if, you, if you go out, uh, actually at my apartment, if you just, if you step outside my apartment and cross a very small road, you come okay. to the Wow. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it, it, it looks like the sea, you know, it's, it's so vast. Is it, is it true? Yes, that is true. There's an island in the middle. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. I just the entire to swim there, you know, <laughs> being naughty in that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you go to Yan Chobing uh, on Google Map and then yeah. uh, you see, uh, look at the map uh, from from the top from the top view. So uh, this it is actually the second biggest lake. So there's another lake <laughs> close by, oh, yeah. it's even bigger than this one. And then we have two other smaller lakes in the city. So the city, the, this small city which has got about 10,000 students and the entire population of the city is no more than 120,000 people wow. and, and is surrounded by three lakes. <laughs> so <laughs> everywhere you go, you will not escape the lake view, you know, and the sunset and the sunrise. Mm -hmm. So it's really beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah, yes. water beach is always nice, you know, uh, to have around. Yeah, I, I miss uh, having a, a lake or, you know, something like that. Yes. And, you know, this world, uh, this, uh, this week, uh, you know, we celebrate the World Space Week, right? And the team is satellites improve life. And maybe you can share because you work in Miasat, you explained just now uh, some of your views about the importance you know, of uh, satellites and the applications. Because maybe some people, you know, they feel this look, you know, dislocated, you know, uh, satellite. Oh, okay, satellites, but you know, actually, it's it a part of our everyday life. So you know, maybe you can shed some light, some of you as the importance of a uh, satellite. Absolutely, guys. I'm glad you asked. Because um, I was uh, I was like uh, everybody else as well in the beginning. I had uh, people don't really think about satellites, right? It, yeah. the, because you don't see the effect, the impact that satellites have on our life directly. But yeah. it's it's amazing. It's uh, such a huge surprise that we are holding the impact of satellites in our hands every day, and that is our phone. And, right. and, our, and our television, Netflix, when we when we uh, stream something on our on our screens, and everything that we use around us is actually um, impacted by the um, usage of you know uh, deployment of satellites into space. Right. Since 1957, the first satellite was launched in 1957. Could you believe that? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and we have come so far we have come exactly. so far that's more than 60 exactly. years right of uh, right. being able to use uh, satellites and for example if i when i come back to malaysia and mm -hmm. i'm in kl and i want to meet you guys and then i say yeah. guys i'm back here let's go out for dinner and you know catch up and then you say yeah sure of course where do we go and then i tell you oh, no guys i care discovered this really nice new hip restaurant and it's uh, it's very new in KL and I want to check it out. Can you come and meet me there? Mm -hmm. The first thing that you're going to say to me is, uh, yeah, of course, uh, tell me. I hope you say, of course. <laughs> 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 so tell me where the restaurant is. Give me the address. Send me the address. And I, all I have to do is just send you the address. And all you're going to do is click on the address. It's going to go to Google Map. And mm -hmm. then there's going to be an arrow showing from your home. <laughs> To the restaurant <laughs> on the google map and how do you think that happens by our friendly uh, you know device uh, sorry uh, objects that's orbiting the earth you know yeah, exactly it's which is called gps <laughs> so <laughs> this is it is as simple as that can if i wanna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk to you uh technical stuff <laughs> okay that's good yeah yeah, yeah i'm just gonna tell you how uh, simple it is the application of a satellite that we don't even realize how important it is yeah. so that is why i'm, I'm so uh, so happy that you guys used uh, satellites as a team for the space week uh, this year yeah. so it's an ex um, excellent way to inform people of the importance of satellites and also to get more people involved in how we can improve satellites and uh, have more satellite companies yeah. in Malaysia to launch more satellites and improve Definitely. communication and everything else. 
And uh, Faiz, do you know that um, satellites are very, very crucial when it comes to climate change and also agriculture? Okay, uh, educate me. <laughs> 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 because satellites are used in order to monitor irrigation system, for example, oh, okay, for, right. for farmers to be able to know when they are supposed to harvest. Okay. Uh, as simple as having a cereal for breakfast, mm -hmm. in order for you to get the cereal into your bowl in your kitchen, okay. the farmers have to know how and when to harvest the, uh, the plantation. Okay. And we actually rely on satellites to give them the images in order to understand when it's when they can do the irrigation system, for example. Mm -hmm. And the other one is uh, the, <clears throat> the information that we get about climate change. For example, okay. have you seen these moving pictures that we have where it shows how the temperatures of the surface of the earth yes, have yes, yes, yeah. you know, very uh, high tech looking, you know, very informative, you know, you know, we, we, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very, you know, all right, yeah, yeah. And we have this kind of information thanks to satellites because they capture the images and send us the data in order for us to understand how the uh, temperature has been changing and the ice caps melting in the polar circle, in the Arctic, for example, and then sea levels rising. How do we have this data? How do we know that this is happening? It's quite, it's quite impossible for us to put a few scientists sitting in the polar cap watching the <laughs> ice you know? <laughs> it's I, quite- I think we, Yeah, we should stress now, you know, there's a lot of satellites and application that, you know, uh, maybe students out there who are, you know, middle schoolers or in a sekolah menengah, you know, should, you know, uh, be inspired to actually uh, you know pick up and study you know uh, this kind of applications and apply to go to sweden you know and join you uh, create more you know malaysians down there and uh, contribute to the country in this field because i think you know now that you mentioned all this you know uh, there's a lot of uh, room for growth i believe right absolutely imagine how much we can do there is so much of opportunities here exactly. and for us to understand, uh, that's just one of it. And then the, the Amazon um, forest, how the for deforestation is affecting yeah. climate change and also the animals, uh, the, the wildfires in California right now, I'm sure yeah. you have heard yeah. 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 we, we fly all the time through yeah, to LA and we always see, you know, even from the sky it looks bad. And I'm sure the satellite imaging uh, will be, you know, uh, much better accuracy to, you know, to predict or to help the folks down there, right? Absolutely. And the hurricanes as well. Whenever yeah. you have a hurricane, the, the you know that you get this warning. Everybody gets a warning on their phone and saying that you have to uh, evacuate because there's a hurricane coming. How do you know a hurricane is coming? <laughs> the, by <laughs> using satellite imaging. You know, satellite has been uh, assisting us in our daily life as if, uh, get, you know, nowadays without GPS, it's in, nobody can actually get into their car and drive somewhere in Malaysia, can? Okay? <laughs> the first thing that you do when you get into the car is after you start the car, you're going to look, where, where am I going? <laughs> Please show I know, me. I know even now, actually, I'm so sure where I'm going. I still want to have now, uh, I don't know why, the, the uh, you know, the backup yeah. of uh, the uh, ways or the GPS, you know, help. Uh, to help me yeah. navigate. So today I, I made a mistake and I entered the jam. So I said, ah, should I, you know, I try to think old school, you know, I try to go old school and, you know, not depend on technology so much, but I guess, you know, there for, for a reason. And yeah, that's why exactly. The GPS doesn't only show you the how to get to that place. It also tells you what is the fastest way to get there. True, true. <laughs> anyway, you know, that, that's, that's, that's why it's important, you know, uh, this year, uh, World Space Week, right? You can see down there, World Space Week, uh, our team is at Life Improved Life and you know we have you uh, we reconnect you know and it's, it's fantastic and you know what are the uh, you know just jumping on to you know I'm just getting hit what are the aspirations you know uh, that you have because now I see a lot of comments from uh, Malaysians we will get to the comments soon but what are the your aspirations for the future generation of uh, Malaysians in the, the space industry because it's it's a, a sort of a unmonitored uh, sector in Malaysia you know uh, you know the space industry so what what are your aspirations for you know us Malaysians? <laughs> okay, um, my aspirations um, are 
uh, absolutely for Malaysians to be more involved when it comes to space technology, uh, not just space traveling, but space technology. And, uh, okay. That's a yeah. good point, DJ. Exactly, because um, I, until today, uh, I still uh, do some talks when I come back home once a year to Malaysia about really? my uh, about the astronaut program, and I still have um, uh, messages sent to me by students who are just graduating or who just got accepted into a university who wants to become an astronaut, but they are uh, kind of uh, obliged to accept the the position that's given to them at the university, and then they don't know what to do with that and how to go in the direction of their dreams, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of interest, you know, for us that comes from people uh, from from the from the society. A lot of boys and girls who are interested to go into this field. What I uh, what is this one thing that I tell them is <clears throat> being an astronaut is not the only job in the space industry. <laughs> so, an astronaut, you can send one astronaut to outer space. True. But in order for that one astronaut to go to outer space, there are hundreds of people behind him, him or her to make sure that that happens, you know. And people you can, that team effort, right? Oh, absolutely. It's not a one-man show, right? <laughs> no, absolutely not a one-man show. Definitely not. Absolutely a team effort. And these hundreds of people, the, the heroes, are, how I would put it, it not to not to minimize uh, any of the sacrifices that astronauts have made. So okay. the heroes are not only in the space shuttle, but the heroes are also in the control room. Those are the real heroes, you know, who make sure that nothing happens to you, that everything is safe, and they have a backup plan for everything that might go wrong in space. So there's a lot of um, capabilities and um, uh, uh, positions that is created in the control room as a person who actually makes it possible for any yeah. of this technology to be used. And so okay. I, would, uh, I would aspire for people to uh, expand their understanding about space studies and space industry, yeah. and also try to see which, is, which, kind, which area is of to their interest that they could contribute in the industry, for example. Don't, don't be forced by your parents, but make sure that you are passionate about you know, trying to, you know, uh, <laughs> Holding your talent, right? Uh, you know, to what you are interested in, right? You know, we have the same problem in Malaysia, where you know, you better do this, but you know, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't want to go there, right? So make sure you know we, we have to inspire them uh, in a way that uh, it will uh, bring out a you know inner belief that they want to do it, right? That's the only way. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we there, there is an engineer in all of us. There is an astronaut in all of us. You know, <laughs> there is. Uh, we, have, <laughs> we, we all can. We all can contribute to a, a lot of uh, um, initiatives that is uh, in this project, right? Because um, yeah, exactly. you know, parents might be a little bit biased. They probably just want to see you become popular, <laughs> but then. <laughs> <laughs> fame, fame is not fame is not everything and fame comes in a lot of different ways yeah true true so b before we we, we go on to the next uh, segment uh, and the last question but we, we, we should just uh, look at some of the comments for you all right uh, BJ? Uh, let's see this one it says here uh, this is from Aina Shamimi. Say you both are so inspiring. Oh, thank you very much. And I speak on. <laughs> I say thank you for sorry, Vijay. <laughs> no, please go ahead. No problem. Okay, and now uh, we just go down this list for a while, then we can take a short break. This is Ibrahim Abdullah. Uh, well done, thank you from AIS Joho. Okay, should I explain more, Ibrahim? We will we, we surely like to get to know you. And I think same person here. I think uh, thank you for organizing this uh, World Space Week for Malaysia. Uh, we would like to uh, thank you for actually, like like you mentioned just now, it's not a one man show. It's a team effort, and you know we have a consortium as you can see down there. A uh, Space View is a volunteer involving organizations for space, and it consists of now 12 uh, organizations to put together you know more than 50 programs and yours is to kick off the webinar series and we have uh, i think 21 webinars you know all in total so you can imagine it's going to be a fun week you know it's going to be an awesome week uh, you know and we just stay tuned and uh oh this is a real question for you vijay uh very polite too from uh, s consumation dr vanaja how's the world space week celebration there in sweden uh, uh 
Air Scouts Malaysia, thank you for that question. Um, I have to say that it's uh, extremely strange for me when anybody calls me Dr. Wanaja because uh, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> uh, in, in Sweden, gan, uh, if it's a five year old child or a, a 90 year old person, uh, everybody is addressed with the first name. So uh, even if it's a kid around me, the child is going to call me by my first name. <laughs> There's no auntie, uncle, and uh, <laughs> titles here again, especially titles. Uh, all the professors, everybody goes by first name. So nobody <laughs> calls me. I'm only reminded by this uh, when I talk to somebody from Malaysia. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for enlightening us, right? Uh, we, we don't know this our culture. That's why, you know, to be, to be, to be oh, polite, you know. No worries. no worries, absolutely no problem at all, but no need for formalities. Just call me Vanaja. I'm very happy if you just call me Vanaja. Uh, I'm not one of those people who are who get upset if you don't use my title. <laughs> Please <laughs> just call me Vanaja. Thank you. The World Space Week celebration in Sweden. I, actually, I have not uh, seen uh, much that's uh, going on here uh, on the Space Week celebration. Uh, all, all the invitation and notes and information that I've been getting is coming from Malaysia. So it seems like Malaysia is doing a lot more for World Space Week than they are in Sweden. And we do have a lot of Swedish astronaut who's based at uh, ESA, uh, European Space Agency. But we've only had one so far. Uh, on all these years, we've only had one uh, Swedish astronaut who has actually been to the ISS. So I'm, I'm really sorry, but uh, maybe I should have checked on that. But no, I, haven't no, 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 I, I think it's a good point that, you know, uh, we can work on this. So maybe yeah. next we can have, uh, you know, a joint uh, celebration, you know, always take a, you know, an opportunity mm -hmm. to move forward, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so next year we have like a, a dual city or dual country celebration, you know, something could be, you know, fun like that. And we, we can need to do more work this time, Vijay. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm, I'll be happy to. Let me check with my university if they are doing something on the uh, World Space Week. Again, yeah. but uh, uh, even even if they do are doing something on World Space Week, nobody will lift their finger today because it's a Sunday. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> okay, now we will we we'll take a short uh, commercial break uh, for all the viewers or for us uh, just to catch our breath. Uh, I can can't even find the, the the button now actually. <laughs> okay, here we go. And we are back again, and you know, uh, you know, from all those comments, uh, we we have uh, quite a number more comments. But you know, I just wanted to find out uh, uh, from VJ, uh, how do you think? Uh, you know, uh, some of them, you know, uh, maybe have no clue uh, on what to do. How how do you think? You know, the public can involve in uh, basically uh, in advancing this uh, sector in uh, in Malaysia. You know. Because you know, I like to pick your brain a bit. You know, <laughs> I know it's coming to the end of the session, but you know, this is vital for me to to actually understand. I'm sure some of the viewers, uh, you know, would like to know also. You know, yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, my personal opinion, of course. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen anything um, extremely um, transparent or. <laughs> Uh, obvious or very apparent uh, initiatives or any of any of those efforts from anywhere else in Malaysia, except for the Astro X Society files, which <laughs> you have you have created, and the rest of us are members of. So uh, Astro, uh, what what is the full name, guys? Uh, Astronautical Association of Malaysia. That's why we went to Astro X. It's more marketable in terms of branding, right? Exactly. <laughs> Astronautical Association of Malaysia, but we call it as Astro X. Can? That's right. Yes. Yes. And you, you guys, especially you guys, you've been doing a, so much of work in this, in this, and and you have been. No, this is not the time to be humble, guys. This thank is you, the time you, to, you. to blow put your horns, <laughs> as to say. <laughs> In order to get people involved, you've been involved in rocketry um, uh, uh, experiments with a lot of school children, and you have been going out giving talks to people as well. We, and we developed an app for you know for teachers to you know conduct courses in their schools, you know. 
Exactly. And this is this is how it's going to start. We cannot go to university students and tell them, do you want to go into space industry? It's a bit too late, you know. You have to start at, at the first, uh, you know, year one, standard, standard one, that just had to, that you do it. We have to go down to their level and tell them, do you know what is a rocket? Do you know how a rocket works? Do you know what's a satellite? And then they are going to be interested and grow up with that interest. Kind of, and then it, it's going to make some sense for them to study uh, anything to do with uh, space science. Correct. And the second thing is, I think we need to make some, uh, make some noises, make some changes. I'm not even sure if I can say this out loud to the public. In Malaysia. Yeah, it's okay. You know, as open platform, you know, uh, I think it's uh, important for uh, people to, to hear this from you, you know, uh, you know. Yeah. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, in order for you to make changes um, around you or in your country or for the people, the mm -hmm. best way to do that is by voting. So yeah. this is why we get a chance every four years to vote. You know why? Because we want to vote for the right people who are listening to our voices and our demands and making sure that we as the citizens of the country get what we want. Correct. So we have to vote for the right people who are going in the right path when it comes to education. How are we going to improve the education system in Malaysia from Kebangsaan, from Darjasatu, from preschool, in order for us to uh, develop and also implement a curriculum on space studies right. and then create a progression all the way into university so that the students who are interested in space studies do actually have a stream that they can apply to when it comes to universities. Yes. And I see that's how uh, I think the building blocks are important uh, for Astro X, you know. Uh, we tackle, uh, you know, space education when it comes to uh, at the uh, kindergarten and primary level and we're developing, developing programs such as rocketry for, you know, the secondary students. And the next step will be, you know, on higher education. I know you love it. I have my daughter, she's... <laughs> yeah. I I just, she's so cute. She's trying to be, she's trying to be discreet, Khan. She's trying to be discreet and good. I apologize to the viewers, but you know, this is Sunday. You know, we're doing this uh, in our own time and, uh, you know, our families are behind us too, but they still want our attention, you know. And so because of that, we should go to the last question, right, Vijay? So that I can spend, uh, you know, some time with my daughter. This is uh, the last one will be uh, from Vivan uh, Raj. He says, uh, have there been much research going on in the space robotics uh, at Sweden? Well, that's an interesting question. I hope it's not a difficult one uh, for the last one for you, Vijay. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yes, there has been... Uh, um, how do I put this? Um, <clears throat> in the... Uh, I am I am teaching in industrial engineering and management, for example. So uh, my specialty is industrial engineering when it comes to operations management and sustainability, sustainable development, for example. So I also teach sustainable supply chain management to my students in the at a bachelor's level and also at the master's level. Then, mm -hmm. so. Okay. And I have 10 years of working experience as an industrial engineer from Malaysia before I moved to Sweden. So mm -hmm. I can actually use uh, my experience as an engineer, a hands-on experience that I know mm -hmm. of when it comes to industrial engineering and then give examples to my students. But more and more, this is becoming even difficult for me because I cannot relate to the current status of the manufacturing industries in Sweden. In okay. Sweden, if you go to any of the factories, any of okay. the manufacturing factories, okay. you see less and less and less operators because everything has been taken over by robots, robotic okay. arms, conveyor belts. It, you know, it's absolutely fascinating. We have a, a manufacturing plant uh, for Scania. And okay. this, this is, uh, we actually take our students there for a trip and, mm -hmm. you know, we get a chance to walk around the plant. I, uh, every time I go there, I'm absolutely fascinated. I don't want to leave. I just want to stand there and watch the robots do its work the whole day. It is <laughs> absolutely, absolutely fascinating. So there is a lot of a lot of research that's going on here with the university and the universities are working with a lot of companies, especially at my university. Mm -hmm. uh, all our research projects has to be in collaboration with companies. So I'm involved in a research project right now where we are also looking into automation and mm -hmm. how automation affects the current operations management that we have and how it affects uh, employees, for example. 
So, and also how automation affects sustainability. Sustainable. Ah, development. now I see the connection. Yes. <laughs> is so, it a nice uh, circle, uh, circle of life there? <laughs> yes, it is. It is. So it gives us a lot of opportunity to do uh, a lot of research in this area. So robotics is one of the uh, top uh, research and application when it comes to Sweden and the manufacturing industries. Wow. Oh. Anyway, you know, we, we come to the end of the session and, uh, you know, I like to, uh, that's a brilliant answer. It, it wraps it up nicely. And, you know, just to, uh, before we say goodbye, uh, we have to run some of our sponsors. Uh, you know, without them also, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, these programs or these webinars uh, will not be possible. Uh, we have Space Hotel, Vijay. Uh, it's a nice uh, hotel in Tallinn Street, uh, who are our official hotel partner too. So, you know, the next time, it's, it's like a capsule. Uh, hotel capsule, very interesting, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> special, so you know, anytime you're back, uh, we got to stay there. <laughs> Absolutely. I thought I, I, I thought I can come and stay at your place. Come on. Oh yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> and I'm just promoting it for our sponsors, right? Sure. And also, uh, ArtTwist.co. We have our official Space Bureau Watch, and I think it's been a fantastic uh, session catching up with you. And I, I hope uh, all Malaysians. Uh, we'll get something uh, a bit from uh, this session. You know, I, I gain a lot and, you know, I'm so happy that we've uh, rekindled our friendship to this uh, program and perhaps, you know, we can work further next year to uh, develop or, you know, have a more solid uh, program. I'm sure a lot of good things will come and uh, to everyone, uh, please uh, follow spacebio.org, go to website, look at our schedule, you know, uh, see what interests you. You uh, know, if you want Vanaja back, uh, give a special shout out and a request if we can have her back in another session. And anytime, you know, uh, it's all basically uh, uh, for the people. I, I keep telling people the spacebio.org was, uh, you know, established for Malaysians, for the individuals, for the organization, so that we can leverage, you know, on a platform which we can forward the space industry. Okay, now I think uh, it's a good time to go because my daughter is really at the back trying to get my attention. I think uh, and have, uh, you know, have a good Sunday. I know you have uh, a bit more uh, of uh, daylight left, right? And, you know, yes. with that, we yeah, like to speak uh, from all of us. Thank, uh, thank you so much. And I want to say, Hazel, thank, thanks to Hazel. Uh, I, you know, you make me proud. You are my inspiration, Hazel. Thank you so much. And thanks for lending your husband to us today. And uh, if anybody else has any more questions, I have a public page on Facebook. You are okay. you're free to write to me at any time. I will definitely make time to reply. And Faiz, you know you have my support and my time anytime you need it. All right. Thank you very much, BJ. Have a good Sunday. And to everyone, see you next time. Goodbye, Malaysia.